Barty here in the green room of a real TV studio, wearing a real TV host suit. And I even have a co-host, and she's blonde. I must be dreaming, someone pinch me. Ow, okay, I'm not dreaming. But how can I be absolutely sure that this is really happening? Well, it's because we have sandwiches. Mm. Mm, that's catering. That is good. That's good catering. And through here, a real TV studio with proper lighting and a crew and smoke. <laughs> uh, it's much better than the, the bunch of webcams around my mother's garage. And not to mention, they've given me not 365 seconds <laughs> this month, but a whole half an hour. That's like, I mean, that's a lot of seconds. Wish me luck. I think so. think you did it. What's well, the only singularity? Cal, where are you all right? Oh, Welcome, Conspiracy 365ers from all around the world. I'm Penny Dennison from FMC, and this, of course, is... Barty from Case File 365. Now, if you watch Barty's Case File from last month, then you already know how all of this came around. Barty, there are people pulling up outside your house. Abort! Oh, my God, we have to get out of here. They're coming. So you're not going to kill me? We need to keep you alive. So you can host December Case File 365. Uh-huh. Yes, we at the network saw something in Barty and his little show. So here we are, ready to make this December finale episode a night to remember. Not that all your shows aren't memorable, Barty. Oh, thanks, Penny. <laughs> well, with the truth revealed and Cal now officially an Earl, it's time to reflect on Conspiracy 365. Relive the highs and the lows and interview some familiar faces, including Harrison Gilbertson, who plays Cal. Oh. Plus, maybe I'll throw in a surprise or two. Are you ready, Barty? Oh, Penny, I'm, I'm like a Labrador at tea time. <laughs> Alrighty, then let's rope us a tree! Oh, look, it's my tree, all grown up. <laughs> you know, I can't believe the conspiracy's over. Finally, I can sleep at night knowing that, that Cal's safe and all of his friends and family and allies over the past 12 months are on the good side of the tree where they should be. The baddies, well, uh, they got what they deserved. Oriana is in the slammer. And there's a new uh, villain to the tree this month, uh, Nelson, who was hired by Rafe to spy on Cow. Which brings me to Rafe. Don't even get me started. He ended up being the biggest villain of them all. Barty, mm. haven't you forgotten someone? Mm. Oh, yeah, uh, uh, sorry, Sligo and uh, Bruno. Evil to the end, may they rest in peace. You know what, Sligo, in some ways, I'm disappointed that you fell over that cliff, because if you were here, you would have felt the vengeance of these two fists. Is that so? It is. No, no, wait, you're making me dead. No, 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 it's OK. This is Rob Carlton. He plays Sligo. This is part of my surprise for you. I'm not sure I like your surprises. Oh, come on. A little bit of... <laughs> oh, my God! <laughs> <laughs> OK. Sorry. How silly of me. Uh, actors, of course. I, I just got all wrapped up in the whole thing, I guess. Listen, don't worry about it. Well, why don't we just go back and show some of Sligo's finest moments? Ooh, that's a hint. Some would say Vulcan Sligo is an opportunist. Callum Ormond, the next in line. And Sligo himself says he's a man who's put his shady past behind him. My life turned around when I became the guardian of Little Winter Frey. He got her and he got all her parents' money. I mean, obviously, there's something very smelly about that. But the truth is, Sligo is mean, nasty, and he's after Cal's gold. Tell me about the singularity. I don't know anything about it. I don't think you're grasping the gravity of the situation here, Callum. He wants to hurt you very badly. Lucky for Cal, he could hold his own against the machinations of this criminal mastermind. But ultimately, Sligo's Achilles heel was his own ward, Winter Frey. I well, would seem Bruno was right about you, Princess. You are a two-faced little liar. You killed my parents. I hate you. Ah! Oh, mm -hmm. oh, Rob Carlton, <laughs> you are mean, mean, mean. No. Oh, you really are. <laughs> hey, listen, how was it for you having to stay in character and then breaking for lunch mm -hmm. with Harrison? Was that hard? Um, on this one, no, it was great fun. We're sort of there between action and cut. You're as mean, mean as you can be. And then if you're going to have lunch with Harrison, if you, if you know Harrison, 
You can't be mean to him. <laughs> it's impossible. The tough stuff is being mean to him when you're meant to be mean. Right. Other than that, it's lovely times. So how was the catering? Because we, we have sandwiches. Look, B Barty, <laughs> I've come to expect from you great questions and, yeah. and you haven't disappointed me there. I do what I can. The catering was fantastic, Barty, and I couldn't believe you didn't drop in. Were you not invited? I, well, oh. I got the invite. I was just, I had other... There were some days where people stole food. Was that you? That might, you know Could what? I didn't think anyone would catch on, but. Uh, we did, we know. <laughs> we knew guy. who it was. Did you feel a bit upstaged when mm -hmm. um, Rafe uh, turned out to be a bit of a bigger villain? What are you me? suggesting? Nothing, man. Like, just kidding. Just... Of course not, mate. Um, <clears throat> oh, that was the great twist, wasn't it? It was. And that's the exciting thing that sense of the uber villain. Yeah, right. So, no, I didn't feel upstaged at all. It was great to see Rafe. And I, you know what? I suspect that he was the bad guy. Though. I kind of had a feeling. Oh, I, didn't, yeah. I never trusted it. that guy, buddy. Yeah. I never trusted him. Were you, uh, were you a little bit upset um, when you found out that Winter was plotting against you? Was I upset, Barty, or was Sligo upset? Come on, big fella, we're going to ease you through the pain <laughs> of this one. Obviously, as Sligo, I was desperately upset. Yeah, sure, right. I was a criminal mastermind. Yeah. Sure, I was an evil piece of work. Yeah. But did Sligo truly love Winter? That's the question. As far as Sligo was concerned, yeah, he, he loved her, but... Love for Sligo was a weird, twisted, mean little thing. That is a scary face. It's <laughs> mm. a very scary, a very scary face. Scary Even face. I'm scared by that face. And what about that. Julia Zamiro? She is ah. hysterical. And of course, she was rating high on the mean meter. How mm -hmm. was she to work with? Oh, she's fantastic. Yeah, yeah Julia Zamiro, um, well, she's the funniest woman in the world. Oh, and, you know, I think she, she plays a pretty mean, yeah. mean, mean character. Uh, we have a quick question from one of our viewers. If that's. Oh, yep. Does that work? Okay, this is from uh, Tiger. Claw mm -hmm. dot one zero four two, yeah. To find username, mm -hmm. uh, and he asked, "What was it like uh, dumping a teenager in an oil tank?" Well, Tiger Claw, if you ever get the opportunity to grab yourself a teenager and drop them inside an oil tank, I suggest you do it. And if you do do it, get a good lawyer because you will spend time in jail. <laughs> Rob Carlton, are you sorry to say goodbye to Vulcan forever? Watching that package, <laughs> watching him fall off that cliff, my little heart went out to him. Yeah, yeah I'm sad to say goodbye to, to Vulcan. I love it. Congratulations. Would you mind sticking around on the couch? Penny, I don't. Thank you. Mm. Hey, you! You're a psycho kid! Stop! <laughs> it's no good, they're faster. Get up! can one 15-year-old boy be chased by the police and escape? Nine times. No, uh, no, uh, ten times, if you count the time that, that Ryan was chased by the police by mistake. I counted. Wow. I'd expect nothing less than you, Barty. And if you want to relive all of those ten chases, you can buy the Conspiracy 365 DVD, which includes all of the episodes and a heap of behind-the-scenes stuff. That is available from December 5. Ah, <laughs> oh, look, it's a text message from Spy Girl. She's a funny one. Spike, you know, you know Spy Girl. Well, yeah, we met outside of your house last month, remember? Fantastic. Anyway, we really hit it off. And she just suggested that we show some highlights from your show, Barty. Well, if she insists. Indeed. <laughs> Case file 365. Let's dig some Barty gold. Let's see. Well, it's a start. <laughs> no more running, bunny rabbit. <laughs> Have you seen this man? No? Bye. A gigantic poo brain face. Must be pretty messy up there. Thanks, Spy Girl. My humiliation is complete. You know, I, I don't see why you and Spy Girl had to become such BFFs. Oh, come on, buddy. Just, you've got to focus. We've got another guest to interview and I don't want you getting all, like, 
party on me. Oh, is it, um... Yes! Oh, it is! <laughs> Every wrongly accused teenage fugitive needs a wingman. What would I do without you, folks? And for Cal, that wingman was none other than... Ogden McCalco, the quiet achiever. When it came to a crunch, Cal could rely on Bob's brains. So what's in the back? Homemade air gun. See, it's just Nelson's bug. We get this on the outside of Oriana's window. She'll never even know we're listening. Bob's it's a work of art. But it wasn't always easy for this handsome boy genius. What's she doing here? Nice to see you too, folks. And as the year transpired, the cost of being Cal's wingman took its toll. Cal, last night was too much. I I'm not doing this anymore. Yes, sadly for a while, it seemed like the bromance was over. Bogues goes above and beyond for you. Yeah, I know. Do you? But like all true mates, Bogues bounced back. Well, I spent a week making that. You think I'm going to miss out on seeing it work? I thought you said you were out. We're still alive after this. You owe me big time. Hey, Taylor hey. Glockner, huh? Hi. AKA Bogues, as conspiracy fans know you. Please meet right. probably your biggest fan of all time. This is Barty. Hey, man. Can I, hey, can I call you Bogues? Um, no. Okay. <laughs> He's Do got some questions, man. though. Yeah, sure, sure. <coughs> Should have Um. Did you end up doing okay in your exams? You know that I graduated high school. I didn't actually wasn't in high school when I was shooting Conspiracy Three Six Five. Alrighty. So listen, <laughs> what was your favourite scene? I tend to gravitate towards the things that freak me out and scare me the most as an actor. So I think the scene where um, Bogues kind of tells Cal that he's too afraid and he doesn't want to do it anymore after the scene on the bridge with Gabby, where Gabby gets thrown into the yeah. river. I was reading that and I was thinking, wow, this is going to be a really great scene and I worked really hard on that one to try and make him really emotional and sad and scared and everything. So I hope that that one turned yeah, out okay. It was probably my favourite scene. I'm not doing this anymore. Doing what? This, okay? The running and the hiding and the people with guns and lying to my mum all the time. Just count me out. How did you picture the character of Bogues? Like, what was your, what was your motivation behind it all? Let me guess. Uh, best looking guy in the world, uh, funny, witty, um, but over to you. No, seriously. <laughs> no, he was, I, I kind of um, thought of him, and I read him in the text, in the script, as this shy, sort of, yet loyal and naive sort of genius. Mm. That's what he is, really. And um, I just tried to create that. And he's there, really, to help Cal and uh, to help him with all the trouble and... Yeah with all the bad guys that he finds, in, you know, that are chasing him, hey, so... Hey, I was just doing my He's thing. Doing his you know, well, you, you call yourself a genius, I was the evil genius. <laughs> I wouldn't call myself a genius, but I think Bogues was... Oh, without a shadow of a doubt. I, yeah. however, would call me a genius. Because he's an actor. So, that, you are yeah. well closing done. in on the truth today, buddy. Yeah. You're closing I, in. <laughs> Rob, I do what I can. You um, We have a question from uh, the viewers. Mm -hmm. So, uh, KT Mushroom Soup. I love mushrooms. Too. Yeah, who doesn't? Um, asks if you could uh, if you could star in the remake of any movie, oh. what would it be? It's a good question. Great it's a question. really great question. Yeah. I've got so many different answers for it. Um, I think KT. I would say that if they remake Daredevil and they remake it right, I would really like the opportunity to audition for Matt Murdock. I hope that answers your question. Well, Taylor, thank you so much. And notice I said Taylor, not Bogues. You do. Um, thank, you. thank you so much for coming. I, I have uh, something for you that, if that works. Uh, Great. This award um, presenting to you for being the best friend a guy could ask for. Oh, there it is for you. Thank you very you. much. Well, well, thank you. Yeah. 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 Will you stick around on the couch for us? Absolutely. Love to. Fantastic. Taylor Glockner, officially the best mate a guy could ever ask for. But don't be getting up out of that chair just yet. We've got a lot of show to get through, including interviews with Marnie Kennedy <laughs> and Harrison Gilbertson. <laughs>
Cal went to Bogues and Nelson finally arrived in Ireland, where they found the last two missing lines of the riddle hidden inside Secrets of the Saints. They then found Tom's map hidden inside of the wardrobe door, and using the transparency, they found out where to start looking for the singularity. Now, Super Sleuth Winter managed to decode part of the riddle, and once they arrived in Craig Hill Keep, they found the way to use the jewel to open up the secret room. Okay, I'm, I'm gonna stop doing that, I'm getting very... <clears throat> dizzy. So what was in the room? Uh, well, it was Queen Elizabeth's scrolls explaining the singularity. And quite a bit of treasure. So I couldn't have asked for a better result. I mean, Cal's safe, he's rich, and he's got his friends and family to live it up with. You know, I say, thank you, a toast to the Earl of Ormond. Um, buddy, mm. I should also mention that online at conspiracy365.tv there is a whole lot of extra video and backstory to the series you can only see online. And don't forget to collect your December awards on the website and go into the draw to win an autographed frame poster from the show. Oh, I just got another text message. And it's from Spy Girl. <laughs> what has she got to say this time, the crazy chick? OK, why not? Here's Spy Girl's favourite outtakes from Case File 365. I, I... <laughs> <laughs> you look good. The oh, this month we've seen. Uh... Right. Oh, wow. Guess nothing sacred, Spy Girl. Happy you no know, common decency. Oh, come on, Barty, turn that little frown into a smile because our next guest is someone that you hold very, very dear to your heart. <laughs> they say every thorn has its rose. On cue, speaking of beautiful, the light of my life, Winter Frey. And Winter certainly had a way of turning Sligo into a big old puppy dog. I'm saying this because I care about you. You do understand that, don't you, Princess? But it was when this princess found her prince drowning in a vat of oil that Winter's life really started to change. Come on, Team Fugitive. I saved your life. You owe me. Risking her own safety for Cal, even as she continued to search for the truth behind her parents' death. It's very, very strange that they would give Sligo all their money and me. And when she finally found the answer... Have you got something you want to ask me, Princess? It would lead to one of the biggest confrontations in Conspiracy 365. Why'd you kill my parents? Let me explain. Yeah, I'm sure you can. I'm sure you can explain how you forged my dad's will, too. And with her family name vanquished, in the end, this princess found her prince. Wow, not for the faint-hearted. There were some pretty dark moments indeed for Conspiracy 365. Marnie Kennedy, the gorgeous actress who plays Winter. Um, great to have you on the couch, thank, thank you. Thank you. I think that Barty wanted to ask you a, quite a specific question. Like, have you got a boyfriend right now? Barty? <laughs> <laughs> it, uh, please, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Marnie, I'm, I'm sorry, she's... Uh... I'm just embarrassing him. He had a little crush on you sort of through the whole series. Oh, so, Marnie, um, which was your, uh, your favourite disguise? Um, there's quite a few disguises that um, I was able to be thrown into, but my favourite definitely was uh, the Oriana disguise, <laughs> when Winter was put into that awkward position. Um, but, no, I didn't have a lot of scenes with um, Julie's Zumero, so when we did get to dress up like that, it was great to sort of be around her and she's so much fun, so I was really, um, really happy with that one. I, I dressed in a lot of Julia's outfits as well, <laughs> um, um, as, as a disguise. None of them made it into the show. No. I was heartbroken. So, I, I guess on the topic of, of Oriana and Julia Zamira, is yeah. she nicer than Sligo? Oh. Buddy. Sorry, is she nicer yeah. than Rob? No, no, Buddy, seriously, did you put your vitamins in the freezer this morning? What? Because I was suggesting you take a chill pill. Who says that? Listen, um, look, it's so fantastic to have you all on the couch. Do you guys keep in touch now that obviously the filming's over? Well, that's a, you know, everyone's so busy with work and that sort of thing. It can be a little bit difficult and that's one of the... Taylor know. and I had a very long conversation on the phone about yeah, four we weeks do, ago, we didn't text, we? I text Marnie sometimes. <laughs> mm. Nice. She so doesn't always text me back, contact. but I do text Marnie. Oh, wow. That's, yeah, that's what you can look forward to. <laughs> that's what yeah. you can look forward to, Marty. <laughs> I don't know. I think, text uh, messages never return. I think <laughs> Marnie and I could have a really deep relationship. Marty, seriously? Marty? Enough. Back off. <laughs> Um, I do have a quick question, uh, again, for Marnie. Um, mm -hmm. Do you like... Uh, do you like chocolate cake and strawberries? I got some flowers in there. Oh, no, seriously, awesome. Barty. Inappropriate. 
down. Haven't you got a viewer's question? <laughs> viewer's question, I think there was a great viewer's question, Barty. <coughs> was there? Yeah, there was. The viewer's question was, if you could be any actress in the world right now, who is the actress that you would love to be up there with? Oh my goodness, there's so many talented actresses out there, but ever since I was a little girl, I've always loved Dakota Fanning. I've yeah, absolutely adored great. her work, and I think she's so talented and so intelligent. So I um, <clears throat> definitely aspire to something, you know. That was from Kay Chung, by the way. Hi. Do you want to ask Rob that <laughs> same <laughs> question? If you could aspire to anyone out there, who would it be, Rob? Any actress out there. Sigourney Weaver. <laughs> yeah. Sigourney Weaver. Yeah. I, you know, I auditioned for that part in <laughs> Alien. Uh, it went to her. I was heartbroken. Yeah. Yeah. Lindsay Lohan, obviously, <laughs> yeah. but that goes without saying. Yeah, yeah. It's a colouring. Um, i got to ask, I mean, everyone has seen the show and we know the, the relationship that Winter and Sligo have had. Of course. What is it like uh, working with Rob off, off camera? Can't stand him. No, oh. um, one of the biggest uh, challenges working on the show was definitely, uh, it was very difficult to come, you know, in and out of those scenes because between takes, Rob and I were laughing around and we had fun. acting like children. <laughs> so um, yeah, no, that was definitely one of the one of the challenges, but one of the most memorable parts. And it's so of lovely to see you again now. Mm, it was no, awful to die at your hands. You know, <laughs> things happen. Yeah. <laughs> we, get, we get past it. I couldn't believe it when I read that in the script. I thought, she's turned on me. Uh, yeah. And when can we expect to see your lovely face back on the big screen again? Well, that's the thing about this industry. You never know when the next one's around the corner. So um, I'm planning on going over to LA early next year. So I just have to sort of see how that goes. But take one day at a time and see what happens. Um, I was just wondering if, before we finished up, I could just give you an, an award, if that's Thank you. all right. It's just, it's fairly nondescript, really. It's just... The Case File 365 Award for the smartest, prettiest, sweetest orphan on television. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> really you. sweet. It's very sweet. Well, I, yeah, oh, not oh. again. Oh, <laughs> oh gosh. <laughs> Case File 365 December, the big finale. Just take... <laughs> Take it easy. Still more to come after the break with Harrison Gilbertson joining us here on the couch as well as more highlights from Conspiracy 365. Case closed. Not quite. Welcome back to Case File 365, the December finale. Case closed. Indeed. Indeed. You feeling better? Have you sort of recovered a bit of your dignity yet, buddy? Some. Yes, no, I, I, I don't know what came over me. Don't worry, that massive stuff up, it's kind of all in the past. And really it's about the future, and the very near future, because there's a lot coming up. Are you getting excited, buddy? I am getting excited, Penny, because very soon we're going to be chatting with Harrison Gilbertson, a.k.a. Cal. And if you mess that one up, you'll never work in this town again. <laughs> I'm only joking. <laughs> well, sort of, but seriously, just don't mess it up, OK? Wait, <laughs> Why don't we show some highlights? Cal, Bogues and Winter. You probably know them as, well, you... Cal, Bogues and Winter. But to me, they are the teen dream team. And here are some of my favourite moments. I think you're going to like them. Well, it tells you that the riddle and the jewel go together. I've got no other choice. How are we going to get into the bank? Um... No! Morning. Yes. You look so suspicious. I'm taking the front foot, Bogues. Mm -hmm. Couldn't have gotten this far without you. Yeah. Uh, the mystery solved. My friends and I survived. My family's inherited a fortune. You know, it's hard to believe the conspiracy's finally over, but we're not finished. Thank you, we're far from it. And I think this is my December finale horn of extreme dislike. <gasps> oh, and what am I disliking this month? Well, Talia Clark. Again, she's one of those, those pesky news reporters who helped create the myth of the psycho kid. Yeah, go and watch her news report online for December. It's at conspiracy365.tv. Even now that Cal's name has been cleared, she's out there trying to get ratings from his story. But this time, Cal comes out on top. The way that you beat things up just for the sake of a good story. You labelled me the psycho kid so that no one would believe me. I was just doing my job. You certainly did a job on me. Yeah, you tell it, Cal. Oh, come on. <clears throat> moving away from the disliking and yes. more toward the liking. Yes, but of course, and we have a very special guest about to arrive. He is a star on the rise, Harrison Gilbertson, AKA the man who brought us Callum Ormond. <laughs> it's hard to believe that only 12 months ago, Callum Ormond was just an ordinary teenage boy. But all that would begin to change when Tom went to Ireland. Family trees, ancient bloodlines, lost relatives. <laughs> be still my beating heart. I'll be back before you know it, I promise. 
365 hey, days. Come on. Stay alive until then. Stay alive. I'll kill you like he killed your father. Still reeling from his father's death, a sinister net closed in around Cal. You've got to hurry, Mark. We've been shot. My sister's unconscious. And just like that, he was the teen fugitive. Come on, We need to talk. Cops, crims, no matter who was after him, Cal managed to keep them on their toes. Why can't two grown men bring in a 16-year-old boy? These almond kids ruining my life. And despite the greed of others, Cal's quest for the singularity was remarkably pure. I don't care about the inheritance. I just want to get my life back to normal with my family. Psycho Kid, Teen Fugitive, Earl of Ormond. Ah, ah nice to I Gilbertson. can't believe you're not still puffing. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to Case File 365. Thank so you. nice to see you. Lovely to see uh, you too. Sorry, I can, I can do it from here. Right. It's not just the network that understands star no power. So Harrison, uh, is it a relief to be alive after 365 days of running? Uh, well, it's Harrison, hi. So listen, you found out you got the part. How did you feel? A major, major 12 part series lead character. Lead character. Um, it was really exciting, you know, it was a little bit apprehensive. I've never done anything like this, um, you know, and it was full on. I'm not, not the biggest runner or uh, fitness man myself, so it was a real challenge in that sense. And I guess um, I was listening to Taylor earlier saying, well, you know, when, when there's a challenge as an actor that it sort of scares you, but it also gives you this kick of like, you know, you dare yourself. So, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so yeah. did you have to do a lot of training with the running or were there a few sort of camera tricks that they used? Did you get a stitch? Oh, I got a couple of stitches. Yeah. Okay. Um, no, I, I did um, have to do... Uh, a little bit of running training, but mainly it was just hard because, you know, it was things like working out the street, you know, r running cobblestones and stuff like that with moss on them. What was it like behind the scenes? I've asked these guys whether there was much pranking and these, you know, Marnie and Rob did a lot of laughing. Yeah. Were you always in character and feeling pretty oh, intense man. or did you muck around a lot? As the show got on, it got harder and harder to contain the giggles because we got mm. to know each other so well. So then yeah. when we get to know each other, you, you know, you're joking in between takes and then... Yeah, it got, it got hard. There were a few days where we really had to bite our cheeks and clench your fists yeah. when you're on the camera, yeah. I think we know each other's laughing faces as well. <laughs> yeah. so yeah. I, always, like, no. I look yeah. down and I, you can see my lips kind of going and, and then Harry the... knows. Yeah, Marty gets super serious. Yeah. Like. <laughs> um, did you manage to sort of act differently? Uh, I mean, towards Tom and Uncle Rafe, because obviously they were played by the same same actor. Definitely, and that's to David's credit, you know, it's it's a difficult thing to pull that off, to make it human and sort of the little differences, and I think you did that really well. So it definitely felt like, because it was an energy thing, more yeah. than like a physical thing, where you felt like you were different people. Yeah, so. I mean, that uh, sort of applies for you as well. What was it like playing a twin? That was the challenge, trying to work at just the little things that you can do, little characteristics. Did yeah. it work like this? Do you, when they shoot it, because I've never done it, do you say a line and then quickly jump in? <laughs> <laughs> or is it a bit more controlled than that? A little bit quieter than that. Yeah. <laughs> uh, it would have been fun if it was like that. That would have mm -hmm. been really cool. Quick, but you'd have to change the jack. Yeah, yeah. you like the spin Run around camera, yeah. put it on your jacket <laughs> and fuck it. Um, what are you up to now? Um, I'm... I'm about to head off to Utah to do a film, so I'm doing my second American feature, which is really exciting. Um, right. yeah. 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 Superstar. Um, and then I come back to Brisbane to do another one straight after. So, wow. yes, yeah, very excited. Different roles, so again, it's that challenge, and uh, we'll see how I go. You're gonna miss Cal. Yeah, I'm really gonna miss the experience. We were talking about it last night. The crew and cast were just the best. Like, it just there was no one, there was no rotten eggs. Like, everyone was really fun uh, most of the time. <laughs> uh, so, I just want to ask you a quick uh, viewer question, and this comes from uh, Nicole Start, and she asks, "How did you become so perfect?" Oh, uh, well, that's really awkward, but incredibly uh, complimentary. Thank you. I get, I don't know. Ask my parents. <laughs> Starts with good genes, yeah, right? That's it, yeah. <laughs> all-round nice guy. Uh, yeah, no, yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> now, before we, we wrap up, I, I do have an, an award for you. Um, and this is for a person I would want most on my side during a, a zombie apocalypse. Thank you so, so much. much. That's for you. <laughs> That's very kind. Thank you, buddy. Thank you. It's a I'll, pleasure. I'd be happy to fight the zombies with you. Oh, stop it. <laughs> <laughs> and that, ladies and gentlemen, signals the end of Case File 365, Case Closed. Don't forget to post on Facebook. Tell us what you thought about the show, about all of our interviews, and don't forget to buy a copy of the DVD. Uh, buy one for your friends, your family. Just spread the word. Indeed, and thanks to all of our fabulous guests, Rob Carlton, yeah. Taylor Glockner, Beautiful Marnie Kennedy and, of course, Harrison Gilbertson. Thank, Thank you for you. doing an amazing job. Guys, come on, stand up and take a bow. You deserve it. Oh, <laughs> it's been a fun 12 months, guys. <laughs> Woohoo! Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, and uh, let's just have one more round of applause for the cast of the most thrilling show in 2012. Yes. <laughs>
course, we can't forget the fabulous Barty who's done such a wonderful job on and off. Thank you. I'd like to give this to you. Penny, wow. Uh, <laughs> thank you. Um, thank you for believing in me. Uh, thank you for my mum for, for, for the garage. Uh, thank you to Spy Girl for... Thanks for the viewers who watched and Facebooked. Barty, yeah. do you want me to cut that for you? Uh, you yes, put it up there. <laughs> I couldn't well, uh, thank you, that is it. Thanks to everyone for a case file beyond expectations. A case file that's finally closed. <laughs>